Wahl mit für unser Volk und Vaterland. Gib uns Gib uns alle Zeit eine Obrigkeit, die dich fürchtet, damit Zucht und Ordnung in Landa herrschen. Steuere einen bösen und dortigen Wesen. Master Thomas Newbridge? Yes? You're to come with me. You're under arrest. Stop that! No message to be passed in a foreign language. You want to know what he said? What secret Squad message? Squad, about turn! Was spoken. Our pastor escort prisoner, quick march! Requested us to please look after his church. to blame for a war that somebody started at the other end of the world. You don't know how that feels. He got arrested because he refused to stop preaching in German. He says German is the tongue of the Lutheran church, the language of Martin Luther. Surely they can't charge him. No, you don't understand, my love. They do not need a charge because there won't be a trial. This is the kind of world we live in. A man saying his prayers has become an enemy of the state. This is the time for heroes. This is the time for the adventure of your life. For you to see the world. For you to put the fear of God into Kaiser Bill and his filthy horse. Remember the promise that Australia made to the mother country. To the last man. And the last shilling! Thank you. Well done, sir. Thank you. An excellent speech, sir. Sir? Good speech, James. Flag-waving rubbish. I'm sure you've heard it before. Well, even so, it seems effective. One does one's best. We all have to help. You want a favor, I tell you. Hardly a favor. Then what? This War Precautions Act. Hmm. What about it? Well, you have the ear of the Prime Minister these days. Can't you make him see it's penal and unjust? It's very popular around the electorate. Germans are being persecuted, losing their jobs and their homes. Yes, quite right, too. What? They're being wrongly arrested, beaten up in the streets? <laughs> well, I can't control the popular mood, nor can the Prime Minister. What's your interest? The bill's immoral. Travesty of justice. Of course. Your daughter married one, didn't she? You used to be very fond of Elizabeth. I used to be friends with you, William. But you can't blackmail me any longer. Oh, don't be stupid. It's all long ago, isn't it? But I'm far too powerful for you nowadays. As to the War Act, it is entirely necessary and essential. We need to weed out the enemy in our midst. Enemy, you damn fool! Half of them were born here. Thousands are naturalized. <laughs> My dear fellow, you miss the point. What point? The war's too far away. We need an enemy. Not in France, we need one here. If we're to have recruits, this country needs to feel threatened. Nothing like a bit of anger and hatred to create patriotism. You bastard. <laughs> It's all in a good cause, William. Defend the flag. Raise money. Send troops to help the mother country. And if a few Huns suffer, it's all in Australia's best interests. My best regards to your new wife. Mrs. Muller! Arresting! 
think some of the Huns are here. <laughs> Mama traders, I'd shoot a lot of them. Is it true you're going to change your name to Miller? <laughs> Mrs. High and Mighty, you'll change your tune before this is over. Look, you get out of here. Get out and leave my mother alone. Or what, Sonny? I'll beat the shit out of you, that's what. I could do it too. Come on, Jim. Leave her and a snotty-nosed kid. <laughs> Idiot. Hear about the latest edict? Oh, don't. Every German name is to be eradicated from the map. What? <laughs> it's true. Handorf is to become Ambleside. Mm. Mount Kaiserstuhl is to be renamed Mount Kitchener. <laughs> oh, they can't be serious. Krondorf will be known as, what is it? Cab me. <laughs> Heidelberg is now Kobe de la. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> Rheinhill is Mons. Mm. Seppels is Dorian. <laughs> and Zygerstoff is Bolta Wilta. Wilta. <laughs> That's ridiculous. They tried to change it to Nanda, <laughs> and in the nick of time, they found it was an original. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they, they wanted to abolish um, the name of Barossa. Sounds too Prussian, Barossa. Is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> In Spanish, it means hill of roses. I like that. A hill of roses. It's nice to laugh again. Lizzie Jolly. Mm -hmm. I like that too. You're going to turn off the light? Mm. A school friend of mine enlisted the other day, a med student. He's chucked it to join the infantry. Then he's a fool. He's a loyal Australian. I've told you often enough, Harry, not till you're 21, not till then. You don't understand, either of you. I understand you're 19. You're a law student with a bright future. What more is there to understand? That I'll probably fail my law exams. It's a stupid thing to say, Harry. He knows I mean it. Will you tell me what in God's name is so important about going to war and having your head shot off? Well, for one thing, there's this. A nice-looking woman in the street gave this to me. A woman just like you. Obviously a silly, vicious woman. Oh, I don't know. She obviously thought I looked old enough to go and fight for her, even if I am half German. Ah, oh, so that's what this is all about. Can't you understand what it's like when you, your real name is Muller and your father's from Wiesbaden? He's lived here 20 years. But still a German. You taught me that, Grandfather. You persuaded me to stop being Heinrich Muller and to become Harry Patterson. Yes. It's all right. I wanted that as much as you did. But now that I'm Harry Patterson, don't you see? I have to join up and fight for this country and prove that not a scrap of me is German. I have to. Yes, I understand what you're saying, Harry. But I... I won't allow it. We'll see. Could be a good harvest. 
Perhaps our best ever. Perhaps 1916 might only be a good harvest. Perhaps it'll be the end of the war. We can all start living again. Come on, let's go down and look at the new vines by the creek. What is that? Maybe something Carl put up? To scare away the birds? Going too far. Inspector, excuse me. You again. What the hell do you want? I I asked you to come and see what was in my field. What some maniac put there to scare my wife. I was told you had to busy, and if I had to make a complaint, to bring it here. So here it is. Filthy bloody mess! Get out of here! Me? You! Who else? Stinks. Animal guts and... Hang on. That's a real bayonet. Yes. Yours? Of course it's not mine. You sure? Inspector, I am making the complaint. Against who? Whoever did this. And who's that? I don't know. Then how can you make a complaint? Isn't your job to find out? My job, Mr. Muller, is to keep the peace, not to waste time investigating petty squabbles between neighbours. I'll take the bayonet. You get rid of this garbage. And don't bother me again. Stefan? It's not good to attract attention these days. Best to stay quiet, Stefan. I won't stay quiet. I've been quiet. I've been careful since the war started. Thank you. And what has it brought me? Freedom. Is that what you call it? It's best not to antagonize. And hope no one notices you. It is what I believe. It may not be very brave, but it's sensible. I forged grandfather's signature and lied about my age. Oh, Lord. I'm sorry I had to. He'll stop you? No, Martha. Not this time. No matter what I have to do. Harry. Ever been up here before? No. I suppose these were always here, but I only found them a few days ago. That was Broken Hill, March 1888. In here is a newspaper cutting. The whole thing was a fraud, a swindle. My fine, respectable grandfather, the MLC and Senator, was a crook. I know. You what? I know. He told me years ago. Silly fool keeping all this. Crook, you call him. Well, isn't he? Wasn't he? I dare say. Young lawyers, expensively educated, can afford the luxury of such opinions. But half the wealth in Sydney was made from sweated labour or shady deals. Half the attics or cellars hold guilty secrets. This city is built on swindles and scandals. And people's broken dreams. He was newly married to your grandmother, and they were desperately poor. He went off, like a lot of others, to Broken Hill. It was the time of the silver boom. He couldn't find any, and he couldn't face coming back defeated. 
So? The Silver City Trust Company. It even sounds phony. He came back and invested the ill-gotten gains. Bought and sold land. Made a fortune. He bought this house. Your grand never really got used to being rich. Neither she nor your mother ever knew where the money came from. So why you? The one person he trusted with his lousy secret. It's always been safe with me. And it'll stay that way. You're not going to use this, Harry? I will if he tries to stop me. No. Now, you listen to me. If you want to go to war, God help you, so be it. But you will never tell him you know what's up there. I won't allow it. I won't let you hurt him. Thanks, Richard, and my regards to Lady McGrath. I thought I said to take that thing back. Yes, you did. Tomorrow we'll go to the army and tell them it was a mistake. Tell them you're a law student and should have known better. A drink, Harry? Um, thanks. Tomorrow, you hear? Here we are. Cheers, my darling. Mm. Cheers. I know you're angry. Bloody livid! So is Harry. What? Being called a shirker. Handed white feathers. Told he's really a German anyway. This latest government edict says anyone whose father has been a citizen of a country at war with the king can be classed as an enemy alien. Ignore that. It's absurd. The government's gone raving mad. How can he ignore it? Put yourself in his place. What answer is there except to join up? You don't want it, nor do I. But really, do we have a right to stop him? Of course. You can make him wait until he's 21, and every day of it he'll be angry and miserable. Do you really want that? Harry. Miss Grandfather? I don't know how, but you seem to have got Martha on your side. Miss Grandfather? Yes. Is that all you can say for yourself? I think so. Your mother has a right to be told. No one's considered her in all this. I'll write to her tonight. I, I needed your approval first. Don't presume you have that. Blast it. Bugger it. Just don't get killed, that's all. I love you. Did I ever tell you that? Do what we told us, what Oscar did. Go away, Stefan. Leave me out of this. We don't need any trouble. Can't you see? You got trouble. How many broken windows? How much humiliation does it take for you to see? What do you want from us? A little courage. Enough to say, stop, that's enough. You're not going to brutalize, and you're not going to frighten us anymore. But what can we do? Complain? Make them hear us? 
tell the government that every time we are attacked, the police look the other way. Oscar's resting. Sigurd's looking after him. Let's go home. That's good advice. Look, stay out of trouble. Johan, you make me sick. You're frightened. And maybe we have good reason. What hope have we got if everyone turns the other cheek? We are people with voices, for God's sake. Voices! And it's about time we use them. Please come home. You listen to your wife. <coughs> well, it's th someone has to say these things. Not you. Yes, Elizabeth, me. so ashamed to see them so afraid. I'm afraid. Not you. Not Elizabeth Patterson Miller. You haven't been afraid of anyone or anything in your life. I am terrified of you. Of what you mean to do. Nothing illegal. Truly. It's a scandal that so few people are here. We should have every single person in this valley. Every man, every child, every woman who has been victimized and discriminated against and made into an alien. Now, don't be afraid of them. We are not breaking the law. We're not speaking any forbidden language. I'm not going to abuse or attack the police. No, I promise my wife not to. I promised her to obey the law, and so I shall. Oh, if you gentlemen can't write it down fast enough, I'll meet you later and talk to you slowly. Now, all we are going to say to you, and to the government, is we are not your enemy. We are no one's enemy. We just want to be left in peace. And if we are attacked, if we are hurt, then we are entitled to police protection. That's our simple right. We vote. We pay taxes. Just like any other Australian. So, take this petition. Have your friends and neighbors sign it. We need thousands, thousands of names. And then we'll take it to the Commission of Police or to the Premier of the State. And we say, look at it. And see that we mean no harm. How many altogether? 211. Once we had a petition with 10,000 names. Some people are in jail, others are afraid. I know, but it's so few. Elizabeth, we have nothing to hide. Perhaps not. Get the cards. Friendly game of cards. Is that the idea? What do you want, Inspector? I didn't hear you knock. I don't believe under the emergency powers. I have to knock. Will you please state your business and then get out? 
You're either very brave or completely stupid. What do you want with us? We've broken no laws. That remains to be seen. We've decided to search your property to see if you're hiding any weapons. That's ridiculous, and you know it. We have no weapons. I'd hardly expect you to admit it now, would I? You did have a bayonet, remember? <laughs> there was Inspector. Well, well, well. So you have no weapons. Whereabouts was it? In the chicken coop. That's a lie. Of course it's a lie, and we all know it, because you planted it there. Now, why should we do that? Trumped up evidence. There won't be a trial, so why do we need evidence? Take him. Very sensible. You won't get away with this. Of course, your father's a bigwig, isn't he? But what have we done? Simply arrested a known troublemaker who was concealing arms. Get away with what, ma'am? I'm just doing my duty. speeches about us. Not his face, lads. No marks on the face. <coughs> General can't see me till next week. Next week? Pressure of work, the war. She's never asked for help before. Not even when she was trapped on that hideous farm, remember? Mm. Please help me, Papa. What in God's name am I going to do? James North. Oh, I tried. He was publicly sympathetic and privately delighted to be unable to help. Billy Hughes. Hates my guts. We never got on. When I need influence, makes me realize how damn little I've got these days. German bastard. seconds to get dry, get dressed, and get out of here. Come on, move! Move out! Come on! Troublemaker, are you, laddie? For your sake, I hope you don't cause trouble in here.
Come on, I'll let double. I don't want you to see I get a move on. Christoph, I'm over here. I get a move on. Hurry it up! Don't speak German. That's the first thing they teach you. The punishment is a hundred yard run barefoot over barbed wire. There are other treatments worse. Oh, Stefan, I don't know what to say. It's so good to see you. But I wish to God it was any place but here. Lovely drive! Yeah! The old car's a bit long in the tooth now. Some of them are taking bets on how long she lasts before she falls apart! <laughs> Mr. Harper? Oh, hello, Elizabeth. Hello, young man. Grandfather? I think you might. Well, like you can. That. You can. Both of you can. We'll just have this now and have a little drive. Done great things, Lizzie, since I was here last. You must be very proud of Stefan. Your husband makes good wine. Then he always did. Thank you for coming so soon. I didn't know what else to do. Who else to ask? Who else would you ask? Martha sends her love. I like the sound of Martha. Good. And I'm glad you're happy. So, Heinrich. Harry is actually in the army. Yes, the bloody young fool. I couldn't stop him. Going to war. And they put his father in jail and call him an enemy. Yeah. I <clears throat> spoke to the Solicitor General in Adelaide. It's a bit more complicated than that, Lizzie. Well, of course. They say... Stefan has a record as a troublemaker. A few speeches, Papa. Peaceful protests. There was something about taking a bayonet to the police station, and they insist they found a rifle here. Now, I'm not saying I believe them, but that's their case against him. And it all sounds so plausible. Trouble is, I'm out to grass. Semi-retired. I'm still in the Senate, but nobody takes a damn bit of notice of me anymore. Is there any hope at all? Not much, Lizzie, I'm afraid. That's the truth. Ten years ago, I might have got him out. Well, did your best. I wish I could have done more. I did manage one thing, however. They've agreed to let you visit him. They never allow visits, but I did manage that. 
I'm sorry. Any personal contact is forbidden. Can't we sit together? Sorry. Regulations. Pretend they're not here. I often do it. Stefan? Just talk, ignore them. You look lovely. Have you seen Gerhardt? Yes. You tell him Bert is managing. She's well. And Carl? He's angry. Then again, you can't blame him. And Sigrid and Oscar? They're unhappy. For God's sake. Never mind them. How are you? Surviving. We all miss you. People are saying they wish they'd been more positive and supported you. Everybody feels ashamed that our corrupt police force railroaded you into this dreadful place. All right, Mrs. Muller, time's up. What do you mean, time's up? I've only just got here. And now you're leaving. Say goodbye. This is a farce. The rules were you talk about personal things. You broke the rules. Get him out. Out! Get that bastard out! What are you, some kind of sadist? Now you see, Lassie, why we don't allow visits. Some stupid, emotional female, like yourself, just causes the lad a whole lot of trouble. God knows how much trouble. Let me out of here. Aye, of course. Go to bed, Carl. You never told me. How was Pa? Well, he, he was... He was better than I expected. He was really very well. Considering. He sent his love. It was strange to meet your father, my grandfather. I always thought I'd hate him, but I didn't. He's not really very hateable. No, he isn't, is he? Good night, Ma. Good night, darling.
please don't cry. <laughs> Tomorrow I'll cut back the burnt vines. They'll grow again. Take a few years, but they'll grow. Half the crop was saved. We were lucky. I'll sleep in the shed from now on. If they try again, I'll be waiting for them. All right. I don't want you to get hurt. I need to worry about that. Oh, God, no! Where did you get that? Never mind. I don't mind. I won't have guns on this place, do you hear me? I will not. You can get rid of it. No. Carl. If anyone tries to burn any more vines, I'll shoot their heads off. What do you want, Inspector? I came to make inquiries. About what? About a crime, Mrs. Muller. A case of arson. Someone burnt your vineyard. Why didn't you report it? Oh. Uh, you've no objection, have you, if my son gets on with his work? None at all. You heard Carl, off you go. Yes, ma. I didn't I report it, Inspector Lucas. Why should I report that or anything else to you? It's my duty to keep law and order. And my right to choose whether I need your help or not. Frankly, I wouldn't ask you to look for a lost chicken or a stray dog. I don't care for your attitude, Mrs. Muller. Any more than I welcome your presence here. As you wish. My report will state that I came to make inquiries, but was refused any cooperation. Good afternoon, Mrs. Muller. the rifle? Hidden. I only bought it to protect you. I wanted you to feel safe. I feel afraid. As long as that gun stays here, that's all I feel. Now, please get rid of it. You don't trust me. That's the real trouble. Well, of course, I I'm trust I'm stupid, you. not like my brother. Well, that is being stupid. Good old Harry, always the favourite son. That is unfair and untrue. It's not untrue, Ma. It's definitely not untrue. I'll get rid of the gun.
Very still. Damn, I left. Uh, do you understand, Carl? In Adelaide, go to see Mr. Harper, the solicitor. Give him my letter. He'll find lodgings for you. Perhaps in a few months. It'll be safe for you to come home. Bye. Take care, darling. Bye. Persecuted, Inspector Lucas. We have information that two men were attacked here last night. Really? What's the name of your informant? It was an anonymous tip. Oh, then who were the two men? We don't know their names. And who attacked these two unknown men? According to the information, your son. The information from the anonymous source. I quite agree, it's flimsy evidence. It's laughable. I'd prefer to ignore it, except that a shot was fired. Are we to be accused of hiding guns again? Let me talk to your son, please. When he comes back, I'll send him to see you. Why, where's he gone? To Adelaide, to find work. How very convenient. Not for me, I miss him. When did he leave? Yesterday, after your visit. He decided he no longer liked the atmosphere in this district. I don't think I believe you, Mrs. Muller. Of course not. You'd prefer to believe your mysterious, unknown informant. I want your son's address in Adelaide. Well, when he's settled, and when he writes to me, I'll give it to you. In the meantime, why not ask your anonymous source the names of those two men and what they were doing here last night? Write to me? I will. Forbes, good luck, Mr. Harry. Same with you. Well, I've no advice. Except keep your head down when they start shooting. Don't try and be a hero. I promise. Take care of yourself. Look after Martha. Uh, never mind about us. You just come home when all this bloody mess is over and finish law. And write to your mother. I have. She's having a bad time. Well.
Elizabeth. Stubborn. Always was. I wonder where she gets it from. The best idea, the only obvious thing to do, is to pack up the damn vineyard and come and live with us. What about Carl? Bring him. He's clearly a bit of a hothead. The sooner he's away from trouble, the better. What about the vines, Willie? And all the years they put into that place? Damn it, you sound like Elizabeth. Hmm. I think I'm going to take that as a compliment. <laughs> now, Oscar, you will drive nice and slow. Yeah, I'm a tilly. Don't be nervous. <laughs> no, I'm not nervous. I'm terrified. It's a good driver. Better careful. Uh huh. Oh. Oh. Stay away as long as you need. Find Carl and bring him home. No? No. no. What? What? Come, come, come. Oh. Oh. If we let you see Stefan all over. Mm. Oh. Right. Ready? Cheers. I only heard yesterday. And since you'd written to say you were coming to Adelaide, I thought it best to wait and tell you in person. He signed on a Swedish cargo vessel. Job as a deckhand, his message said. And please, understand and forgive him. Poor Carl. It's been a terrible time for him. Not all of you. On the other matter, the application for another visit to your husband. They've refused. Afraid so. I won't accept it. I beg your pardon. I won't accept it. What can you do? Fight. How? No idea, but that's what I'm going to do. I can accept that Carl's run off to sea, and that Harriet's thrown away the law to become a soldier. But I will not accept, in this day and age, that they can imprison an innocent man and prevent anyone from seeing him. It's unfair. And inhuman. I haven't the slightest notion how exactly, but I am going to fight it. Come on! Dig! Put some effort into it! It's more like it. The sooner you German bastards finish digging this ditch, the sooner you can fill it back in again! thoroughly gone into. I regret that your request to see the prisoner is denied. No, 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 no. I asked for an interview with the Attorney General to state my case. Oh, there's no hope of that, I'm afraid. Out of the question. I told this person you won't see her without an appointment. That's correct. She walked in here and refuses to leave. Do I know you, madam? Not yet. Well, then would you kindly do as my secretary asks? Yes, uh, I think you should listen to me. I'm far too busy. My name is Mueller, Elizabeth Mueller. My husband is a prisoner on Torrens Island. Mr. Boothby, I had no idea. I'll get someone to remove her. German. My father is Senator William Patterson. <clears throat> More importantly, my husband is a naturalised Australian, imprisoned on false evidence trumped up by the local police. 
Mr. Boothby, shall I fetch someone? False evidence. Well, you've only my word for that. However, I'm not in the habit of lying. Addison's daughter married to a German. Stefan was born there. He came to Australia by choice. We met and married 20 years ago. I sympathise. I dare say there are many cases of injustice. No yes, doubt sir? about it. Well, then, please, let... I'm sorry. Don't waste your time. This newspaper cannot show support for anybody with a German name. What? Why not? Well, we'd lose half our readers. Probably have our newsstands burnt to the ground. Windows broken. You mean you're afraid? I mean that yesterday in France, a thousand Aussie boys died, gaining a strip of land that might well be lost tomorrow. It's a stinking war, Mrs. Mueller. If people are unfair and irrational about the Germans, who can blame them? I can. I'm sorry. Come along. I'll see you out. My eldest son will soon be one of these boys. So I can and do blame people for blind, ignorant prejudice. Mrs. Mueller, please. Just a minute. What did you say? Your son? Yes. Your son is in the army. That's right. And your husband is interned as an enemy. Yes. And your father's one of our oldest serving senators. Been there since Federation. Mrs. Mueller, I think we should sit down. Miss Wayne. Yes, Mr. Boothby. Would you bring some pot of tea and some biscuits? Yes, Mr. Boothby. I want to be kind enough to ask one of our photographers to step in here. Yes, Mr. Boothby. Then you're going to help me. No, I don't want to mislead you. It's a story. It'll sell newspapers. A lot of newspapers. Good. <laughs> you think so? And the censor finishes the crossing out, it reads, Dear Gerhardt, love from Bertha. Get on with it! I'll wrap that barbed wire around your balls. You, Miller, you want it. visit from your wife. No smile. Not very loving, Muller. Not very romantic. She's been getting her sale on the newspapers, your wife has. Take it. Read it. And tomorrow, when she visits, you're going to tell her there mustn't be any more stories like that. Understand, laddie? You're going to tell her to stop. Wonderful to see you, Stefan. Everybody sends their love. Oscar and Sigrid. Berta, of course. And Kyle? Yes. How is he? Strong as an ox. You know Kyle. Is he helping with the vineyard? Uh, of course. And the vines? Will the grapes be good next harvest? Better than ever. You have no idea how that consoles me. You'll be back home by then. By next harvest. Look, why can't we be given even five minutes in private? Rules, Mrs. Muller. You know that. 
Lord knows what the prisoner would get up to if we locked you in here with him for five minutes. <laughs> However, just to prove I'm not as bad as you think, I'm prepared to make a wee concession. He can go. I'll wait outside. Can I say fairer than that now, can I? Thank you. Oh, my love, I miss you. You look so beautiful. I can hardly bear it. Is it ever going to end this nightmare? People are hopeful now the Americans are in. They say perhaps another year. I have to tell you this, even if it upsets you. Heinrich's in the army. Mm, I know. How? Oh. I've read it in the paper. Newspapers are banned here, but they allowed me to read this. It's why they let you visit it. It's why they left us alone. I'm to ask you not to go to the newspaper with any more stories like that. I'm to say stop making trouble. And are you saying that? What I'm saying, my love, is make more trouble. Make as much trouble as you can. I think it's wonderful. The visit's over. It'll be the last, lassie. The very last. That I promise you. <coughs> Elizabeth is in the news again. Hmm, so it seems. Petitioning the Supreme Court. A writ of habeas corpus for the return of her husband. Hmm. What does mmm mean? Just mmm. Are you for or against your daughter getting in the papers? However I may feel, I'll tell you one thing. She hasn't got a snowball's chance in hell. To hear your case surprise you. Uh, it disappointed me. My husband was arrested without a charge, held in barbaric conditions without a trial, and the court chooses not to hear my petition for his release. And so now, I'm, I'm not surprised at the failure of decency and justice, but I have to wonder how my son feels now, fighting overseas for his country. A country which imprisons his father and will not tell us why. And what are your plans? Oh, thank you. Just one more question, please, if you wouldn't mind. The enclosed picture of your mother may be of interest. It's one of many in the newspapers here. I trust this reaches you and you're safe and well. Sydney Morning Herald, as the wife of Senator Patterson supporting the statements of my stepdaughter Elizabeth. Would you mind? Mind? Would I mind? coming here today and for giving me the chance to tell you of these camps at Torrens Island, Trial Bay and other places in which thousands of men and women are unjustly imprisoned. Yeah. Yes, I did say thousands. Exact numbers I can't tell you, we don't know because there are no records, no courts, no trials, no juries. People are just taken away day or night without warning, reason, or without proof. 
It has been going on ever since the war began, encouraged by our politicians and not reported by our newspapers. It is persecution and victimization in the name of patriotism. This is a shameful time. This is a stain on our history. Shut up, you dirty German-loving bitch. Thank you, ladies. I believe, as you do, in a fair hearing in a free country. German tart. Your husband is a bloody German spy. If my husband is a spy, then let him rot in jail. Let them bring him to court. Let's have them accuse him. They won't, because they can't. Because you know in your hearts that he and the thousands like him are just innocent victims, caught up by the hysteria of war. Find out how he got this, and when you've done that, give him a week in solitary. Yes, sir. this, William. It's good of you to receive me. Always a pleasure to see old friends, James. I regret our last meeting. I've forgotten it. It's generous of you. Ever miss the old days? State Parliament? Often. I haven't been called a class traitor or a conniving bastard for years. <laughs> well, Elizabeth was only 18 when we got you elected. Yes. Abroad on a world trip, hadn't even met the fella. Can't you put a stop to this nonsense, William? Did you come all this way to ask me that? Well, haven't you got any control over the way she behaves? None at all. Never did have. I can't believe that you approve. Whether I do or not, wouldn't make the slightest difference. Damn it. You do approve. If you must know, I'm proud of her. Immensely proud. Good God. She's got guts and spirit and the gift of making people listen. Approve. I'm bloody delighted. I'm shocked at your lack of patriotism. <laughs> patriotism! She's a ranting and dangerous subversive. I'll write and tell her she'll be flattered. She is talking treason. She's undermining the war effort. In the privacy of this room, do me the courtesy of not treating me like an idiot. I mean it. Women are starting to take notice of her. Your own wife, that didn't help. Women are the key to the referendum on conscription. We cannot afford to lose votes. Well, there's only one way to shut Elizabeth up. It's to give her what she wants. The PM will be upset with your attitude. He had hoped to include you in the next birthday honours. Mr North, will you stay to dinner? Thank you, no. Mr. North has just informed me I've chucked away my chance for a knighthood. You'll never be Lady Patterson. I expect we'll manage. The government wants an end to this stupidity. If your daughter agrees to stop, I will set up an inquiry into her husband's case. That won't satisfy her. Damn it, don't push me too far, William. I want a signed pledge. In return, you can tell her, after a suitable time, the bloody man will be released. If you renege on that, You'll have me to reckon with. I'm not in the habit of breaking my word.
Mrs. Patterson. Mr. North? I think she's won. I think she has. <laughs> <laughs> What did his wife say in the letter? That there's a chance he might be released. I smell a deal. I don't like deals any more than I like Germans. We, uh, we give him the letter, sir? I've burnt it. Sufficient time must elapse so that it won't appear I forced their hand. They say soon. How long is soon? I'm sorry. I'm not being fair. I'm just creating my own trouble. If Stefan is freed, it gives hope to Gerhard and the others. Be patient. See, sir, a troublemaker, a recalcitrant, one of our worst prisoners. If you allow his release, it will be a reward for violence and bad behavior. I must earnestly request that you ask the government to reconsider. Good morning. Mrs. Miller? Yes? My name is Janssen. I have a letter for you. From Carl. Is the ship back? Where is it? The ship is in port, ma'am, but your son didn't come home with us. Copenhagen. Denmark. Why? Why jump ship? Why there? Was it a girl? Girls, ma'am. But no special one. Hmm. His letter says nothing at all. Except that he's well and please try to understand. It says nothing. Oh, well, that's Carl. Kept a lot inside him. Yes. I know he felt bad about his father. Deep down, real angry. Hmm. Thank you for the meal, Mrs. Muller. You're most welcome, Mr. Janssen. Very kind of you to come all this way. I have a notion what he plans to do. I'm not sure if I should say this. Please. I think he means to join up, fight in the war. God. Well, that's what I think. He's a child. Hardly, ma'am. He's big and strong. He might be barely 18, but he can pass for older. I hate this awful bloody war. Yes, ma'am. But if 
he left the ship in Denmark, he'd have to make his way across to England. On another ship, I expect. Is that what he'd do? Mrs. Muller, I, um... I don't think he planned to fight for England. Jerry spotted in that barn. But we cleared them all out. Stragglers, probably. We'll flush them all out as soon as it's light. Yes, sir. I need a volunteer. Blackie. I keep telling Stefan it can't be much longer. Does he get my letters? From Behan. Well, what are you all hanging about for? Go and get those bastards! You ready? Ah! 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 There's the boat! Other side of the river. We'll have to swim.
Put that one in the sick bay. Bury that one. Come on! No! Blundering bloody fools. You stupid men! There'll be trouble. It was an accident. There'll be a price to pay for all this. Full inquiry. Man in charge of the camp has been dismissed. But not charged with murder. Well, he and the warders all swear the prisoner was killed while trying to escape. I have recommended that the Torres Island camp be closed down. It's got a bad reputation for brutality. The internees will all be transferred to Trial Bay. Why not end the farce and set them free? My dear William. You must believe I had put in the recommendation for his release. <laughs> it was delayed in the system. I'll tell Elizabeth. I'm damn sorry. What news of your grandson? He's in France, fighting for his country. Yes. Quite. Uh... There is one matter. This is perhaps not the time or the place. Um, well, think it over. Prime Minister thinks it would be fitting if you would accept a knighthood in the next honours list. You tell the Prime Minister from me to go to buggery.
Telegram, Mrs. Muller. Thank you. Father died of wounds. We had the news from the Red Cross. Does it shock you that he was on the other side? I suppose it would have once. But they were just poor bastards in a different uniform, being sacrificed and misled like we were. Mother must be in a bad way. Carl was always her favourite. We did what we could. Martha went and stayed for a while. Which was a help. She's over the worst of it. She's coming back east, selling the vineyard. I told her she couldn't sell it to walk away. Damn place. Brought her nothing but grief. You've had an offer? Yes. Hardly what the place is worth. We're lucky to get anything. Have you signed? Tomorrow. To a settlement, we could go back east together. What will you do back east, Mother? I don't know. Live with Martha and Grandfather, be a widow available for remarriage? I don't think you have to worry about me. But I do worry about you. I'd like to worry about you. It's time I did. What exactly does that mean? I don't want to go back and finish law. You must. That's what Grandfather said. Well, what did you say? Well, I told him it was my life and I'll live it the way I choose. That must have pleased him. <laughs> Martha helped. Martha's a sweetheart. Yes, she is. If you walk out of here now, you waste 20 years. I know that. Hard work and dreams. Father's dreams. Even I remember how he loved this place. You think I want to leave? Then don't. Well, I can't run it alone. I'd help. Oh, thank you, darling, but you know nothing about this kind of life. Teach me. I've made some inquiries. There's two pieces of land across the creek for sale. We're going to expand, Mother. Who pays for it? I do. Army pay. 
Plus, a little bit of help from Grandfather. You really mean it? I've meant it ever since France. When you're frightened, sitting in mud and slime, you do a lot of thinking about the future, should you be lucky enough to have one. Well, I never once thought about the law or being a barrister. I thought about this place and wondered if I changed my name back to Muller, would father have me here and would Carl accept me? I accept you. You don't have to change your name back. But I think I will. That's part of it. The descendants of Stefan Muller should keep his name alive. I think it's time I showed you what the vineyard really looks like. Right. Welcome home. We trust you enjoyed the alien years. Next Thursday, we premiere two new programs, including the award-winning documentary series The Duty Men, a preview next, and shortly on ABC The World Tonight. <laughs>